Good day, class. In this video, we are going to study the heat clearing herbs. The heat clearing herbs have the main actions of clearing interior heat, commonly indicated for an interior heat syndrome. From the definition, you will see that this group of herbs is different from the exterior releasing herbs. The previous one, they more focus on exterior, and now in this category, they can clear heat, but more focus on interior, interior syndrome. So one is superficial, the other one is interior. This group of herbs can be further divided into five different categories. Herbs for clearing heat and purge fire, fire. Herbs for clearing heat and dry dampness. Herbs for clearing heat and relie relieving toxicity. Clearing heat and cooling blood. Clearing deficiency heat. So as you can see from the title, this group of herbs have the common characteristic or the common actions of clearing, clearing heat and then they have something add on plus purging fire, dry dampness, relieving toxicity, cooling blood and for deficiency heat. For deficiency heat it, it, it is actually for the in deficiency then because of the deficiency heat is from the in deficiency. To purge fire, when we talk about the etiologies, the exogenous pathogens, or even the endogenous pathogens, what's the difference between the heat and fire? So this from from the name when we use the when we use the term, we need to identify what's the difference between heat and fire. There's one view that's basically heat, heat and fire are the same. Heat, fire is just hotter than heat. And even toxicity is even hotter than fire. So sometimes we say toxic, toxic fire. Just want to emphasize that's the heat, extremely heat or extremely hot. But when we think logically from the philosophy view, the heat and fire, the heat is actually the result of the fire. For example, if you want to make the room cool, if you want to make the room warm, you need to set up your fireplace. You need to create a fire to increase the heat in the room. You can create the heat from the heat. So that's the relationship between the fire and heat. So this group of herbs, clearing heat and purging fire, this group of herbs can eliminate the root of the fire and clearing heat and also many herbs in this category can relieve fever however we need to emphasize this when we talk about heat in acupuncture or in chinese medicine theory whenever we talk about heat we not only refers to fever the patient may present with fever or may not the patient may present with the other Heat symptoms, heat symptoms, internal heat symptoms, such as hot feeling in the body, a red facial complexion, thirsty, and prefer to drink. With a red or difficult urination, a red tongue, yellow coating, and rapid pulse. pulse. So these are the manifestation, these are the possible manifestation of a heat syndrome. This group of herbs, the heat 
green sheets and Persian fire. This group of herbs also mostly used in the qi level, in the wound diseases, and also in the zhang fu organ, also in the qi level. When we say the qi level, don't you will see from the tongue what kinds of manifest tongue manifestation can indicate the, the heat in a qi level, not in the way defensive level, also not in the blood or in level. So in this situation, the qi level, the tongue, the patient may present with a thick coating, especially a thick yellow coating. When we talk about the heat syndrome, the heat syndrome can be divided into exterior and interior heat syndrome. In this category, we more focus on interior heat syndrome. But how do you know which one is interior and which one is exterior? So there's a kind of rule you can use. That's whenever you see a patient aversion to cold, then we will think that must be an exterior syndrome. It can be arterial cold or arterial heat. Thus, in an interior heat syndrome, the patient may present with other symptoms, but the patient must not present with a volume to cold. The interior heat syndrome also can be divided into excess heat or deficiency heat. Most of the herbs in this category have, have the nature of cold or cool. The flavor, mostly bitter, also can be other flavors. The reason is because the bitter can purge, can purge fire. Bitter can clear heat. That's why most of the herbs in this category are bitter. Bitter, sweet, salty or pungent, mostly are, are bitter. Bitter and cold and clear heat and dry dampness because bitter can dry dampness. Bitter can clear heat and purge fire, clear heat, relieving toxicity and nourish in. The function from nourish in is actually from sweet. Sweet and cold can nourish in. Salty and cold. Salty can soft, soften the lungs, cooling the blood and relieving toxicity because of cold. Pungent. Pungent can clear heat, eliminate fever, and relieve irritation. So it also depends on the heat. Where is the heat? In which organ? For example, the heat in the heart. Patient may present with irritation, palpitation, insomnia, or dream disturbed sleeping. The heat in the lung, the patient may present with coughing, tachynea. The heat in the stomach, the patient may present with vomiting, stomach ache, or diarrhea. The heat in the liver, the patient may present with red eyes, sore eyes, or headache, or very bad temper. So these, these will depend on where the heat is. Then we can choose which herbs we're going to use. Also, so the meridian and the meridian tropism depends on which which organ, the which which symptoms the symptoms in which organ the, the herbs can relieve. Then we say this herbs can enter which organ. For example, if a herb can clear the heart heat, then we say this herb with a heart meridian entered. So if this herbs can relieve the irritation, it re relieve the sore eyes, red eyes, and then we say this herbs is liver meridian entered. This slides help you to identify the heat in different levels, especially how do you know where is the heat? Is it in a 
qi level or it is in the blood level. So we're going to identify the heat from the manifestation of the patient. A heat in the qi level, the patient will present with severe fever, severe sweating, severe thirst, and search and searching and large pulse. The severe fever, actually the high grade fever, severe fever, severe fever might not be a very accurate term or very natural term. High grade fever is more natural. The, the reason why we use severe, we just want to use very severe to help you to emphasize fever, severe, sweating, severe, thirst, severe. So the heat in the qi level presents with three severe and such and large pulse. So that's the manifestation of the heat in qi level. The patient will have a high grade fever, we have excess sweating, we won't have the desire to drink. The heat in the blood level, the patient also may present with fever, but this is not a high grade fever. The body temperature can increase at night, so the manifestation will worse at night and feel relief during the day. The patient may feel, still feel thirsty, has no desire to drink. The patient will have dry, dry mouth, but they, they want to drink water, but they don't want to they don't they don't they want to drink water but they don't want to swallow so it's kind of they want to rinse their mouth the dry mouth the patient will have less coating or even no coating present with a red tongue it can be irritation insomnia or bleeding also because of the qi level the patient also may present with a thick coating The heat in the body we can see from the view of four levels. We also can see from the view of zhangfu organs. In different zhangfu organs, the patient may present with different symptoms. It will be related to the common symptom in the organ. For example, the heart, insomnia, palpitation, irritation, the liver, red eyes, sore eyes, and irritation. Depression, the lung, cough, coughing, or tachinia. So these are common symptoms of these individual organs. Because of the properties and characteristics of this group of herbs, as well as the, the characteristics of heat or fire, when we apply this group of herbs in the practice, there are some things, some aspects we need to consider. Firstly, the heat is pathogenic yang. The yang pathogen can easily damage in and damage fluid. So in some and damage in in some heat curving herbs are bitter in flavor and cold in nature. Bitter can dry. So the herb itself can damage the yin. The deficiency heat syndrome usually is caused by yin deficiency. So when we use this kind of herbs to in the in the situation of yin deficiency with deficiency heat, we can use this group of herbs with fluid generating herbs. We are not going to introduce this group of herbs. If you are interesting, if you are interested in, you can refer to the textbook. The heat pathogen. So in a patient suffer from heat or suffer from fire, the heat can damage in, so the patient will have indeficiency, such as the lack of body fluid. The patient may present with thirst or dry coating but this group of herbs 
heat clearing her, heat clearing her. They are bitter. Bitter also can dry dampness. So when you apply this group of herbs, you make the in of fluids worse. In this situation, we can add in nourishing or fluid nourishing herbs. So that's something when we use in the in a formula to, to treat the patient. This, that's something you need to think about. Secondly, the heat clearing herbs are cold and cool in nature. So they can damage the spleen and stomach. So when you use this group of herbs, especially with patients with weak spleen and stomach function, then we need to add something to tonify the spleen and stomach. Because the cold, we always we always said to avoid the cold and raw stuff, the cold food and raw food to assist the spleen and stomach. So when you use something cold and cool, especially when you use too much overdose or after a long term, or someone suffer from weak spleen and stomach problem. For example, this kind of patient may suffer from diarrhea easily. You eat the same from the dinner and the second day, everyone is fine, but one or two of your friends always got diarrhea. So this kind of patient, this kind of person, they got a weak spleen function. In this situation, when you use heat clearing herbs, you need to keep, you need to be careful. You can add, add something to tonify, to strengthen the spleen and stomach function that can help to prevent diarrhea, especially diarrhea and sometimes vomiting because of the coldness in the spleen or stomach. Thirdly, the interior heat syndrome with active symptoms. The heat clearing herbs should be used with anterior releasing herbs to achieve releasing both interior and exterior. And also this can prevent the exogenous pathogens invade interiorly, which means the exterior pathogens invade internally from exterior develops into interior. So a patient suffer from interior heat syndrome, they have high grade fever, thick coating, irritation, red eyes, sore eyes, and in the meantime, the patient presents with aversion to cold or aversion to wind, slightly headache, runny nose, colloting pulse, in this situation, we will use the heat clearing herbs plus bacteria releasing herbs that we have studied in the previous videos. The reason is because this kind of patient, they suffer from both interior and exterior. If you're going to treat, especially the present with interior, a worse symptom in the interior, if you use the heat clearing herbs to treat the interiors only, the pathogen in the exterior level is possible to develop into the interior. That's why in this situation, we're going to treat them both, exterior and interior. And also because of the, the, the characteristic of this group of herbs, they more focus on interior. So if patient also presents with exterior, you need to add something. Fourthly, the pathogenic heat can easily bind with the intestinal waste, which manifests as constipation or dizziness, headache, flushed face and bloodshot eyes, sore in the mouth or tongue. 
especially constipation accompanied with the other symptoms. So in this situation, it's very similar to this point. This is the human body. You got the fire, you got the heat in the body. In the meantime, the patient presents with constipation. So you got excess stool in the body, the intestinal waste. This is this very similar to this situation. The stool become the wood here because the heat is formless as yang. Yang have to stay in yin. So the stool become the heat, the, the, the reason of the heat. In this situation, we, the patient may present with the fever. And also the fever is very difficult to relieve. In this situation, what we can do, we use the, the herbs to clear the heat. So we can use the herbs to reduce the fire in this level. Reduce the fire. In the meantime, we can use the purgative herbs to cause diarrhea, to relieve the stool. So in this situation, it's very similar. If you want to reduce the fire in this image, you're going to remove the wood. Then there will be no fire. That's very similar in our body. If you remove the stool, the fever will be reduced. So, especially a patient presents with fever and constipation, that's something you can think about. Especially in the very commonly in the practice, you can see a patient with fever, especially if a patient suffer from common flu or common cold. They present with fever, sore throat, cough with a, a lot of phlegm, greasy and thick coating. In the meantime, they got con constipation. They haven't go to the toilet for a few days. In this situation, you can add the purgative herbs to cause diarrhea to remove the stool. And then most of the condition, the patient will tell you that the fever reduced after diarrhea. But also, we need to be careful in this situation. Once the patient diarrhea, we will stop the purgative herbs. So we don't cause diarrhea all the time. We only want to remove the stool or keep the regular stool. We don't want to cause the excess diarrhea. That's something we need to think about. In the treatment, we always treat until to we always treat until some stage we don't overdo it so that's the purgative herbs we can use but until certain stage in this situation you can't prescribe a formula a formula to the patient for one week or two weeks with the purgative herbs that's not the, not, the, not the law. What we can do, we can prescribe one or two days, or you can prescribe the normal formula, and then you add two or three packages of purgative herbs, and you need to in, instruct the patient. Once you diarrhea, you can stop this, this package, and you continue with the others, which won't cause diarrhea. So this is something we need to think about. Another two aspects is the, the wind, the internal wind came from the yang, the heat. The heat came from hyperactive yang. So the patient may present with, when the heat go to pericardium, that's actually the heart or the pericardium, the, the mind, the patient may present with high fever, convulsion, sparrow, restlessness, dizziness. In this situation, if a patient presents with the wind, the symptom with the wind, we can use this group of herbs plus wind extinguishing 
and spiral stopping hubs. The last one, the pathogenic heat tends to damage yin and qi. So, the patient may present with thirst with the desire to drink. Short of breath, fatigue. We can use heat clearing herbs and qi tonifying herbs or fluid generating herbs. This especially happens in the later stage of the disease. After a few days, after one two weeks fever, the patient feel tired. So in the in this stage, we can use qi tonifying herbs or fluid generating herbs, depends on the condition. The the wind generating, the wind symptom. Most commonly happens what happens is the patient was pre presented with high grade fever and after a few days the patient start to spare them. Especially the kid more commonly happen in kids. So in adults it's not a common, especially if not due to the inflammation in the brain, in adults it's not common. But in kids we need to be careful, especially when you see a kid with a fever. So that's something you need to be careful. When we use this group of herbs, there are another two aspects that we need to consider. Firstly, the differentiation. I mean, because this group of herbs mostly are cold, so we cannot use them in a cold syndrome. Apart from this, we also need to identify where the qi is, the heat is. For example, if the heat is in the qi level, we need to use the herbs that can clear the heat in the qi level, but not the one clear the heat in the blood level. If a patient suffers from the, heat, the stomach heat, such as the stomach ache with a red tongue, bad mouth, bad mouth smell, and then we can choose the, the herbs that can clear the stomach heat, but not the liver heat or the lung heat. So that's the meaning of differentiation. We need to diagnose correctly and then choose the herbs correctly. The second is the adverse reactions. When we use this group of herbs, we need to be careful of the, the kind of side effects of this herb. This group of herbs mostly are cold. Some of them are cold bitter, some of them are cold, sweet cold. So it will depend on the situation, the patient's situation. The cold can damage the yang qi. So if a patient suffers from yang qi deficiency, when you use this group of herbs, you need to be careful. The cold and bitter can damage the digestive function, especially the spleen and stomach function. A patient suffers from the weak stomach and spleen function, you also need to be careful. A cold herbs, the cold can dry, so it can dry dampness. The heat, the pathogen heat in the human body can consume the damp the body fluid. So a patient suffer from heat syndrome. They may present the indeficiency directly. For example, they they feel thirsty. That's a sign of the lack of body fluid. So because of the heat, because of the pathogenic heat, the patient will present the indeficiency. And then when you use the, this group of herbs, they have the property of bitter. Bitter can dry dampness, which can result in worse of the indeficiency. That's also something you need to think about in the meantime. Some of the herbs in this group, they are sweet and cold. Sweet and cold can nourish in, can nourish in. When they nourish in, it actually increases the dampness in the body. So in this situation, 
you also need to think about the dampness. So it will depend on individuals. Is, is this patient suffer from yang deficiency, suffer from indeficiency, or suffer from excess dampness? Then you may choose different kinds of herbs. And then when you choose different herbs, you can think about the, which one, which, which action you need, which side effect you need to avoid from the herb. These are the general introduction of the heat clearing herbs. And from the next video, we are going to introduce some of the specific herbs. Thank you for your attention.